I am very excited about this video today. There are a lot of products out there for home studio owners to try to get it so that they can just mix and master their own music wearing headphones. And to do that, there's some software that will actually correct the EQ of your headphones to make it as flat as possible. And some companies that are doing that are Sonarworks. And some other companies are taking a different approach, stating that the real problem with headphones is more so the imaging problem, where when you have headphones on, it's hard to get a three-dimensional space where you can mix and make good adjustments in terms of panning and placement. And so Waves has come out with a number of products, their NX line, to help you visualize what your mix would sound like inside of a room. So it's basically a room simulator and has a few other features to help really dial in a good sound. But when we mix with headphones or headphones using this other software to correct either the image or the EQ, does that really give us an advantage over just the headphones themselves? Headphones traditionally have a bad reputation of not being good to use when we're mixing and mastering music. So I decided to do an extensive shootout against a master that I've done with my studio monitors and then also all these different headphone correction software. So that is what this video is about to see if those products actually do help make a song translate better when mixing and mastering on headphones. And I'll also show you my blind shootout that I did for all the different versions of this song that I mastered, listening back on both the studio monitors and separately on headphones. That way we can get a good idea of how these mixes translate to the real world, regardless if you have a home studio environment or you're listening back on headphones. I think this video is gonna be pretty eye-opening, so please stick with me all the way to the end. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music in your home studio without needing to spend a ton of money on expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week to help you level up the quality of your music. And as a special thank you for your time today, I have, as always, a gift for you. In the description, I have a link to download my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. These are a bunch of different plugins I use all the time when I'm mixing and mastering music. I've gone out there and found the best free plugins and put them all in this guide and labeled them by the different categories so you can find some awesome compressors, distortion, reverbs, delays, even sample rate converters if you need some top quality free ones. I have it all in that guide. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to go and check out the description and download that. So let's jump into a session where I mastered a song using my studio monitors and then remastered it using headphones and then headphones with these different types of software correction. I'll do my best to point out any potential flaws in this experiment to give you the best information possible. The song that we're gonna be listening to today is by a band called Signals Origin. It was recorded and produced by my good friend, Greg Fender, who is an awesome producer, by the way. So if you need someone to help you with your music, definitely go and hit him up. I have links to both the band and also Greg's information if you wanna hit him up for maybe some studio production work. All right, so let's take a listen to the unmastered track. Here we go. Would you get that Pretty awesome sounding song. I was hired to master this song. And so of course I'm in my studio. I spent all this money on acoustic treatment, tuning this room. So here is the master that I came up with for this song. Would you get that Did I make it easy for you? Original. Now, is it possible that we could potentially get a master sounding that good or even better using headphones? This would be a game changer. You wouldn't need to spend all the money buying the really expensive speakers. You wouldn't need to buy all the tuning software to tune and EQ your room. You wouldn't need to set up acoustic treatment and you could literally work anywhere in the world with a pair of headphones and a laptop. And to me, that would be the dream. So I've been really looking for solutions to try to do this. 
Now, this is not a perfect study by any means. There will be some subjectivity to this at all times. And if you mix or master the same song twice in a row, it certainly will have a few differences here and there. But I try to be as consistent with this as possible. So I copied all the settings I used when I mastered using my studio monitors and pasted them on all these different tracks that use some sort of different headphone correction software. I zeroed out all the settings so I had to make all the same decisions by, by previewing in the headphones. And I came up with several different masters that we can choose from. The first remaster that I did was actually using a pair of these Sennheiser HD 650 headphones without any EQ correction at all. Then the next remaster I did was using those headphones with Sonarworks. Then I did the same thing again using Wave CLA NX plugin. That one does both EQ correction for those headphones and room simulation. And I'll show you the settings I use for all that. And then the last master I did was using DeSonic Real Phones to do both EQ correction of my headphones and the spatial imaging. And that one is really extensive. They have tons of options. And so I have that remastered version as well. So here are the settings that I use for the different headphone correction software. So real phones, I'm using Music Studio One, 100% ambience. I have this, this density thing set to 100. This basically just gives it a little bit of enhancement, that low energy. Um, I tend to run my subs a little bit hot in the studio, my monitors, and this sounded most similar to what I'm used to hearing in the studio. I have the headphone correction for the Sennheiser HD 650s set to 100% because I want my headphones to be flat because that's how I tuned my studio. Angle 60 degrees, again, that's that's just like a standard recommended angle for where your, your studio monitors should be positioned. And then the HRTF, I have set to 75%. I think that's default. And this just helps with uh, this to simulate a room sound. Other than that, I think everything else is pretty much flat. Um, I do have it set to subwoofer boost with the response at 50%. Again, that just adds a little bit of sub energy down uh, in these headphones to really help. Here are my sonar work settings. Very, very simple. I use the mixed uh, filter type down here and then just the standard correction for HD 650 headphones. Um, do 100% correction on all of that. I don't mess with any of this other stuff. Here's what I use for Wave CLA NX. I have my ambience set to 70%. That's just the sweet spot I found. Um, I'm using the Sennheiser HD 600 headphone correction. They don't have the 650, but this is like as close as I can get. Um, and coincidentally, it sounded awesome for my masters. So uh, this is literally the information I used for my head. Uh, so that's, I measured the circumference of my head and the ear to ear distance and put that in here. Make sure you do that, that's important. And um, I just use the CLA 10 plus sub for all of my monitoring. I, for fun, I checked it on the boom box. Let's see, the boom box and then also these mains up here um when i was referencing but the majority of the master came from this studio monitor selection so in this session i have them all laid out so here was the initial master that i did this is with my studio monitors i did another studio monitor master but this time preserving a little bit more dynamic so i just made it a little bit quieter because sometimes if you have a really loud master you'll pick that every time in a blind shootout because we're biased to think that louder sounds better so I wanted to have something in there just to check to make sure that, you know, that wasn't necessarily the case. Here are my Sennheiser 650s without any EQ correction, Waves NX, Sonarworks EQ correction. And then I tried two different attempts with real phones because the first attempt I did was pretty bad. It did not sound good at all. So I redid the master by reducing some of the spatial imaging and then did my best. So let's give these all a listen just so you could hear what they sound like. Would you get that love? Did I make it easy for you?
Okay, so that kind of gives you a little bit of a sense for how drastic of a difference these different headphone correction software can make when you're using them to monitor your master, your song that you're working on. You can hear that there's a, there's a few outliers, right? But for the most part, the headphone masters kind of held up. Now, I didn't want to try to make a decision on which master I like the most by clicking through this because a lot of times we can be biased knowing what the products are that, uh, in which master they're associated with. So I did a blind shootout. Now, it's really easy to have a bias when you can see which products you're using when you're doing your masters, when you're trying to pick which master might sound the best, especially if we're comparing studio monitors to headphones. So I decided to do a blind shootout with all seven of these different masters, and I did 10 different rounds where I chose my favorite master, just listening to it and not knowing which file I'm listening to. And you can use some free software called ABX. I have a link to that in the description. So if you want to go and download that and shoot out some of your own masters and do the same experiment, you're more than welcome to do that. Just be sure to come back and leave me a comment and tell me how it worked out. So here is the software I use to do the blind shootout. It's as simple as just loading all the different files that you have that you want to test to figure out which one you like the best. You just put them all in here by clicking the load button choose where your file is, and then you'll have a series of files. You can then click the play button and it will hide the file name for you automatically. And then you get to hear in real time what the different files sound like and it tracks the progress of the song so that you're at the same part when you're jumping between files. It's super, super powerful. So I performed a blind shootout with all seven masters 10 times. So 10 times I played the song, different parts of the song, jumping between the seven different masters I prepared, and then you get to choose which one is your favorite, and it will keep track of all the statistics for you. So what I'm about to show you is what those statistics look like. And I performed this shootout two different ways. The first way was listening and doing the blind shootout using my studio monitors to make all the music decisions. And the second shootout I did was wearing my Sennheiser headphones without any type of correction and making my decisions based on the headphones. Reason being is that maybe I would prefer the headphone mixes when I'm wearing headphones and maybe I'd prefer the studio monitor mixes when I'm listening back with the monitor. So I want to make sure that that didn't really play a factor or to at least minimize that as much as possible. All right, so let's check out what those results look like. And these are the results that I came up with when I played the music back and did the blind shootout wearing the headphones without any type of correction. The master I liked the most happened to be the one that had Waves CLA NX plugin. I also chose a, another headphone master, which was the Sonarworks corrected headphone mix. Uh, I chose that one time. And interestingly, I also chose the studio monitor mix twice blindly, and then the quieter studio monitor mix twice. So if we break this down, we have one vote for Sonarworks, five for Waves CLANX as the best sounding master, and then we have basically two of the monitor mixes, both louder and quieter. The grand total is actually pretty close. So when I mastered with headphones on, I chose headphone masters six times, and the master I made with the studio monitors four times. So what if we did the same shootout, but listen back on my studio monitors this time? So here are the results for that. I apologize because I did two different shootouts, but they both add up to 10. I pushed the wrong stupid button, but here's what I got. When I listen back on studio monitors, if we look at the different choices, I chose the studio monitors, one time on this first shootout. I chose the Sonarworks Master once, and then I chose the CLA NX version two times in that shootout. We look at the other shootout I did, three times I chose the studio monitors, I twice again I chose CLA NX as the best sounding master, and then once I chose the studio monitors quieter version. So if we tally up those two shootouts, we have almost the exact same results as when I monitored with headphones, where there was one vote for Sonarworks. This time, instead of five votes for Waves CLANX, there's four, and I had five total votes for the studio monitors. 
And so that puts us dead even where in a blind shootout, half of the time I picked the master that I did using my studio monitors and the other half I chose with headphones. Out of the 20 different masters that I blindly chose, I never once picked ones with uncorrected headphones. I thought that was interesting. That might be coincidence. It might not be, but it seems like there is some merit to doing some sort of correction. What's also interesting is on both attempts I did using real phones, neither of them translated to being what I thought was the best sounding master ever. And to my astonishment, I actually picked Wave CLA NX masters more times than my home studio monitors, which tells me that it probably is possible to make competitive mixes and masters wearing headphones and using something like Wave CLA NX so you don't have to make a massive investment in studio monitors and then go through the trouble of building all these acoustic panels everywhere and then treating your room and then buying a measurement microphone and tuning the acoustics of your room to make it as flat as possible. All you really need is a pair of headphones in this, this dumb plugin. Now let's talk about some of the caveats of this study that I did, because this is not a perfect study by any means. Obviously I remastered the same song multiple, multiple times. And I did my best to try to be as objective as possible and not lean on any of the moves I did previously from some of the other masters. I always started each new remaster by listening to my reference songs that I have. I listened to anywhere between four and six songs just to get the sound of the headphones in my head. That gives me a good starting point to then go and try to quickly make the moves wearing the headphones or also doing the studio monitor masters. Now, the CLA NX master was one of the last masters I did after all the different masters, so maybe I got better as I kept mastering the same song over and over again. I don't know. That, that is a potential problem. But if you go back in this video and listen to the differences in all the masters, they're all in about the same ballpark. So I think my mastering is pretty consistent. Another possibility is that this song is a pretty dense heavy song. These results may not hold up as well if we have something with a lot more space or something that's not so aggressive and heavy. Maybe in different genres that are not quite as dense as metal, these software might do a better job. I don't know. Another potential caveat is that I really only did 10 blind shootouts for the monitors and then also the headphone playback to choose my favorite master. Now, in the grand scheme of statistics, that is not a lot of data, but I think it's enough to at least draw some basic conclusions and see some patterns. Let's quickly summarize what we talked about today. Today, I attempted to master a song on my studio monitors and then remaster it using several different headphone correction programs. They're all designed to help make headphone mixes and masters translate better to the real world. So then after making my initial master with my studio monitors, I then remastered it on headphones without any EQ correction. Those headphones that I used are Sennheiser HD 650s. They're amazing pair of headphones and at a great price point. So if you need a good pair, check those out. I have links to that in the description as well. And then I did a number of masters after that using different headphone correction software, such as Wave CLA NX, D-Sonic, real phones, and then also Sonarworks EQ correction. When I played back those seven different masters and did a blind shootout, I then chose my favorite master in a blind shootout 10 different times when I played the songs back using both my studio monitors and also those headphones. I chose the Sonarworks EQ correction master one time out of 10. I chose Wave CLA NX plugin master four times, and then the other five were the masters that I did with my studio monitors. When I listened back to the shootout using the headphones this time, I chose Sonarworks one time, I chose the CLA NX plugin five different times as my favorite master, and then the remaining four were the studio monitors. So that tells me that it's about 50-50 as to what my favorite master was. 
regardless of if I'm listening back on studio monitors or headphones, which gives us an indication that if we use something like Wave CLA NX when we're mixing or mastering our music, we could probably get pretty similar results compared to if we were to mix and master in a professionally treated and tuned studio using studio monitors. And that blew my mind. So I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration to know that it is possible based on this experiment I did to mix at a competitive level using headphones with maybe some sort of software like Waze CLANX. Now your results may vary wildly. You might need to get used to the new sound of your headphones, but I hope this shows you that it is at least possible. So what do you think? How flawed is this experiment? Let me know in the comments below. Also, do you think you can get competitive sounding mixes and masters with headphones and maybe some of this headphone correction software? Let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget about that free downloadable guide I have in the description that contains all of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. There's a lot of good ones in there and it's definitely worth at least checking out. If you thought this video was helpful, it would mean the world to me if you would share it to social media groups online or maybe to some friends that are having trouble mixing and mastering their own songs. I think this valuable is important to get out to the world and show people that you can indeed make some pretty good sounding mixes and masters using headphones despite what the majority of people say on the internet. With that, I want to thank you again so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.